Yeah, we will. Bertie, thank you for having me, and Tanya, thank you for having me, and I actually have an apartment in Bergen now, so I try to spend uh, half my time here and, and half my time in the U.S. Um, also just want to recognize one of our team members, uh, Previn, who's also in the audience. Um, so, so my name is Brayden, I'm the founder and CEO of Aquabyte. Uh, we're the first company to take a Silicon Valley approach to applying machine learning in aquaculture. Um, just a brief background about myself, so I'm a machine learning researcher. I had studied uh, machine learning at Princeton and started a number of machine learning companies. Um, one of my previous companies was an algorithmic trading firm. I also started another company that did cancer detection on tissue images, so we could actually develop algorithms that diagnose um, cancer more actively than a doctor. And so at the beginning of last year, I had the opportunity to incubate a new company at NEA, which is a USBC, and they really wanted me to come up with a new concept in machine learning. And so I had been interested in aquaculture and decided to take a two week trip um, before Aquanor and was just really amazed by how the industry had developed here. And uh, went back to my investors and decided to focus the, the company on Norwegian aquaculture. And one of the key insights we saw was, uh, I mean, as everyone knows, over half the cost of uh, running a farm is feed. And so the big idea being if we could build a machine learning al algorithm to optimally feed and save 20, 30% or even a few percentage points of uh, feed, uh, that could be quite significant. And uh, since then, that's developed into a whole, a whole business. So um, about us, we, we build uh, software. Uh, we build computer vision machine learning software for farms. Uh, what started off as uh, being uh, biomass estimation, so the idea being if you can understand biomass over the lifetime of a fish and how much you fed in the environmental conditions, you could optimize feed. Uh, that's transformed into a holistic platform that now we can do a number of different things. We can also account sea lice, we can also detect pellets. And uh, this is really a collaboration between our, our team in uh, Bergen, so we have uh, two employees here um, in an office not too far from here at, at uh, BTO. And we also have a team of machine learning researchers in San Francisco, and the two are collaborating together, and we really think that the combination of uh, the two makes this special. Uh, so as, as I mentioned, we have a number of uh, researchers. We recently closed uh, a $3.5 million round uh, with US and Norwegian VCs, which was really exciting, as well as some universities. Um, and in the next year, we'll commercialize the first product at, at some local farms. Um, so if we think about, okay, what is machine learning? So everyone's been kind of talking about this. Well, if you think about the problem of biomass estimation, say we're doing it from cameras, uh, the, the programmer says, okay, let's, let's take these images, let's see if we can build a program to estimate biomass. And so he might write that initial program, and then he might update it, and then eventually to get closer and closer to the results. What we do is actually take the biomass and we take the images and we give it to the program and we guide the program to be able to estimate biomass better and better. And so there's uh, this effect of the algorithm learning um, how to estimate biomass. And so we've actually taken models that have been very successful in other domains, such as autonomous driving, drones, and social media, and been able to adapt it to aquaculture. So just an example uh, from my previous company, um, so we uh, fed the computer uh, hundreds of thousands of images of uh, tissue with cancer and tissue without cancer, and so we had doctors annotate each of the cells, and so the algorithm uh, was able to detect uh, cancer, as I mentioned, better than a doctor, and so just the whole uh, evolution of machine learning and just the evolution of deep learning has allowed uh, superhuman performance in a lot of these different tasks, and so um, one of the things we realized was aquaculture is extremely well poised uh, for the same kind of performance in machine learning. I mean, you have fish that are exothermic and you can pretty much record every type of uh, variable that affects fish growth. And so um, we've seen that machine learning has allowed, uh, as I mentioned, advances in other industries. I mentioned algorithmic trading. We also see it in precision farming. So in San Francisco, for example, there's a number of companies working on how can I uh, kind of uh, design and grow my crops optimally? How can I um, have uh, feeders uh, that kind of, or um, uh, 
spray pesticides only on the, the on the weeds. And so we've done the same in aquaculture. This is an example of one of our algorithms that's able to detect uh, most of the fish in the foreground. And so um, we're, we're applying algorithms in, in the same way. So in terms of how we see uh, machine learning applied in aquaculture, I mean, we started off with this notion of uh, feed optimization and biomass, but that's really kind of turned into this holistic idea where we can apply it across the value chain. So it's not just in terms of how much should I feed, it's also for the sales and processing side in terms of how can they fulfill their contract with distributors. So uh, if they have a contract with Whole Foods, how do I grow the fish such to time it and to coincide with the markets and also uh, not have to buy and sell in the spot market. We're also uh, thinking about sea lice. So it's uh, not just uh, how do I mitigate sea lice infestations, but also how can I develop this in a way that I can report to the, to, to the government authorities. Um, and so we're working on a number of these problems. Um, just a deep dive into one of them, sea lice counting. So, uh, how our algorithm works. So we collaborate with a number of farms and uh, have gathered footage. We've had uh, expert sea lice annotators go in and draw a bounding box around each of the sea lice and categorize them into different life stages. And so we have an algorithm that now is able to uh, count sea lice and classify them into different life stages. And one of the things, I mean, one of the challenges of building sea lice algorithm and kind of the development recently has been, okay, um, how do I actually verify that my sea lice counts are right? Like, do I have to make this leap of faith to trust the algorithm? And the answer is, uh, as I mentioned, inherently in machine learning, experts are teaching the algorithm to learn. And so part of it is we have experts in the loop that are telling the algorithm when it's making an incorrect uh, prediction. And so uh, we're able to verify every single one of our predictions that we're giving the exact correct uh, sea lice count. Um, and and present it in a, a way that's uh, reportable. Um, so for example, so that I can send it to the Matasina. So um, one of the inherent aspects of machine learning I keep reading over, over and over is that uh, we have humans in the loop. So if you think about uh, the, the bio evolution of kind of biomass estimation, sea lice counting over the last 10, 20 years, I mean, no one's been able to build a great solution. And part of that is kind of inherently, can farms really trust the results that they're getting? And so uh, the answer is I, I don't think you need to make the leap of faith. I, I think uh, if you take an example of Facebook, um, if you've gone on and seen they have very highly targeted ads, it's not just because they have really smart machine learning uh, engineers working on it, they, they certainly do, but they also have a team that is actively going out and verifying uh, their predictions and making sure it's correct and constantly updating the algorithms. And so it's this combination of expert farmers in the loop combined with the algorithms that really makes it work. And so uh, it, it's, it's very challenging to be able to build an algorithm purely off of technology. And so uh, I, I think you'll find that the most uh, successful algorithms have, um, have, have farmers in the loop or are able to um, kind of have a, have, have a solution that is, is not just uh, technology oriented. Uh, we've, another thing we discovered, uh, the hardware in the cages is good enough. So we've actually taken footage off of existing feed cameras and able to build uh, pretty accurate uh, kind of sea lice counting and, and biomass estimation algorithms with off-the-shelf cameras. And the fact is, we need to develop technology that is easy for farmers to use. We don't need more, cage, uh, more cameras or gadgets. We don't need more cage furniture. We need to think about how we can build software that can leverage existing infrastructure. And so for us, we're thinking about how can we build uh, a, a basic platform where we can deploy many different algorithms and, and kind of make it easy for farmers to use. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, the other thing uh, we're, we're thinking about is giving t uh, farmers a solution that is more holistic. So uh, farmers don't need another one-off lice counter. They don't need another one-off biomass estimation. They need a platform that solves a variety of problems for them. And so the, the same platform we're deploying for biomass estimation, we're also using it to, as I mentioned, on the sales side, we're, we're thinking about, okay, how can I integrate with feeders such that we can get closer and closer to an automated farm? Uh, we're using kind of the, the same sea lice estimation, uh, counting algorithms in terms of mitigating infestations as well as kind of making it 
um, in a way that can re be reported to management have automated sea lice counts. And so if you have something that is able to give you uh, very accurate sea lice counts, why would you ever go back to netting 10, 20 fish a week? Uh, when you have something automated. And so we're, we're thinking not just for the farmer, which I know I've talked a lot about farms, we're also thinking about how does this uh, affect feed producers? So how can we design uh, optimal feed formulations and feed programs that feed over the entire life, to, uh, over, over the entire growing uh, season of a mm. fish? Uh, and how, how can we work with the kind of processing and sales department to be able to, uh, again, fulfill distribution contracts? So, um, Again, we've kind of been building these algorithms over the last year. We'll have the first uh, de kind of deployments at some select farms. Uh, again, we're thinking about holistic solutions that work across the entire value chain and collaborating with both farms, feed producers, as well as sales organizations to, to make this work. And so um, we've been really uh, humbled by the press uh, that we've received so far um, and kind of really want to pay it forward in terms of working with everyone here uh, to be able to see if we can solve more problems in machine learning and welcome you to uh, visit us uh, both in Bergen as well as in San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brighton. Uh, there's a text in popular music called The Winds of Change. I'm not going to sing for you, don't be worried. But we really should feel the winds of change uh, blowing through this room, through our industry right now. It's highly inspiring. Um, one, one thing that, that Brighton said that really brought out the, the poet in me, he talked about it designed in Silicon Valley, but it's produced in Salmon Valley. So to me, that's pure, pure poetry. <laughs> So I have, I have that softer side as well. <laughs> uh, the next uh, 